Okay, welcome to Storytime with Aunt Lizzie. Today's book is The Story of Little Baba G. This was a fun one that Grandma Gill had at her house. It's also an Indian story. There's a version called Little Black Sambo too, but this one's a little more politically correct. Once upon a time, there was a little boy and his name was Little Baba G. He's in India, by the way. And his mother was called Mama G. She's sewing something, I'm wearing a sari. And his father was called, wait for it, Papa G. And it looks like he might be a cha tea maker who makes pots like in the story of the cha tea maker and the tiger, which you'll have to ask Grandma Vilo to tell you. And Mama G made him a beautiful little red coat and a pair of beautiful little blue trousers. See his coat and trousers, aren't they wonderful? And Papa G went to the bazaar and bought him a beautiful green umbrella and a lovely pair of purple shoes with crimson soles and crimson linings. People in India like to wear lots of bright colors together. And then wasn't little Babaji grand? Oh look, what are they doing? Oh, they're taking his picture. And that is a large format camera. So he put on all his fine clothes and went for a walk in the jungle. Do you think it's a good idea to go walking by yourself in the jungle? No. And by and by he met a tiger. And the tiger said to him, Little Babaji, I'm going to eat you up. Would you have wanted to meet a tiger in the woods? What do you think he should do? How would you respond to a tiger in the woods? And little Babaji said, Oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up. I'll give you my beautiful little red coat. So the tiger said, very well, I won't eat you this time, but you must give me your beautiful little red coat. What do you think the tiger's gonna do with his coat? So the tiger got poor little Babaji's beautiful little red coat and went away saying, now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. He does look pretty grand, I do have to say. I'm kind of surprised that the coat fit him. And little Babaji went on. Don't you think he would have learned his lesson and turned back and gone home? Anyway, he's a very determined little Babaji. And by and by he met another tiger and it said to him, little Babaji, I'm going to eat you up. <laughs> and little Babaji said, oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up and I'll give you my beautiful little blue trousers. So the tiger said, very well, I won't eat you this time, but you must give me your beautiful little blue trousers. Ooh, and his trousers are the kind that kind of balloon out. So they would fit a tiger because they have a drawstring so you can get, make them very big. They have lots of pleats. So the tiger got poor little Baba G's beautiful little blue trousers and went away saying, now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. Oh dear, I see some possible complications in our future. And little Baba G went on and on and by, and by he met another tiger. How many tigers are in this jungle? I ask you. And it said to him, little Baba G, I am going to eat you up. And little Baba G said, oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up and I'll give you my beautiful little purple shoes with crimson soles and crimson linings. Do you know what crimson is? It's a kind of red. But the tiger said, what use would your shoes be to me? I've got four feet and you, four feet, and you've only got two. You haven't got enough shoes for me. Uh-oh, this is a problem. What do you think little Baba G's gonna do? But little Baba G said, you could wear them on your ears. 
So I could, said the tiger. That's a very good idea. Give them to me and I won't eat you this time. Oh no, little Babaji is left with only his underwear and an umbrella. What is he going to do? So the tiger got poor little Babaji's beautiful little purple shoes with crimson soles and crimson linings and went away saying, now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. What do you think's gonna happen next? He just has an umbrella and underwear left. And by and by little Babaji met another tiger and it said to him, little Babaji, I am going to eat you up. <laughs> And little Babaji said, oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up and I'll give you my beautiful green umbrella. But the tiger said, how can I carry an umbrella when I need all my paws for walking with? This is a good question. You could tie a knot on your tail and carry it that way, said little Babaji. So I could, said the tiger, give it to me and I won't eat you this time. At least he's a problem solver, even if he doesn't know when to turn around and leave the jungle. So he got poor little Babaji's beautiful green umbrella and went away saying, what do you think he's gonna say? Now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. And poor little Babaji went away crying because the cruel tigers had taken all of his fine clothes. Presently, he heard a horrible noise that sounded like and it got louder and louder. Oh dear, said little Babaji, there are all the tigers coming back to eat me up. What shall I do? What do you think he should do? So he ran quickly to a palm tree and peeped around it to see what the matter was. And there he saw all the tigers fighting and disputing which of them was the grandest. And at last they all got so angry that they jumped up and took off all their fine clothes and began to tear each other with their claws and bite each other with their great big white teeth. This is before they take off all their clothes, I guess. Which one do you think is the grandest? Well, now they're not wearing their clothes, so you can't tell which one is which. But who would you vote for? Let's go back to this page. Who would you vote for as being the grandest tiger? I think I'm going to go with either the red coat or the purple shoes with crimson lines. So then they're all fighting and they came rolling and tumbling right to the foot of the very tree where little Babaji was hiding. But he jumped quickly in behind the umbrella and tigers all caught a hold of each other's tails and as they wrangled and scrambled and so they found themselves in a ring around the tree. What do you think little Babaji's gonna do? Then when the tigers were very wee, which means little, and very far away, little Babaji jumped up and called out, oh tigers, why have you taken off all your nice clothes? Don't you want them anymore? But the tigers only answered, Grrr. Then little Babaji said, if you want them, say so, or I'll take them away. But the tigers would not let go of each other's tails and so they could only say, Grrr. So little Babaji put on all his fine clothes again and walked. And the tigers were very, very angry, but still they would not let go of each other's tails. And they were so angry, they ran around the tree trying to eat each other up and they ran faster and faster. What's gonna happen? Until they were worried around so fast that you couldn't see their legs at all and they still ran faster and faster. till they all just melted away and there was nothing left but a great big pool of melted butter, or ghee as it is called in India, round the foot of the tree. And there's the monkey saying, what happened? Now Papaji was coming home from his work with a great big brass pot in all 
in his arms. And when he saw what was left of all the tigers, he said, oh, what lovely melted butter. I'll take that home for Mama G for her to cook with. So he put it all into the great big brass pot and took it home to Mama G to cook with. Don't you think he thought it was a little strange to find butter just lying in a puddle in the forest under a tree? I guess he just was grateful. When Mama G saw the melted butter, wasn't she pleased? Now, she said, we will all have pancakes for supper. I'm not sure that pancakes are really a very Indian thing. Maybe chapatis. So she got flour and eggs and milk and sugar and butter, and she made a huge big pile plate of the most lovely pancakes, and she fried them in melted butter, which the tigers had made, and they were just as yellow and brown as little tigers. Then they all sat down to supper. And Mama G ate 27 pancakes and Papa G ate 55. How many do you think little Papa G ate? Oh, I just noticed they have the picture of little Papa G dressed up in all his clothes on the wall. But little Baba G ate 169 because he was so hungry. I guess chasing tigers around and giving them your clothes is hard work. The end. And there is the story of little Baba G by Helen Bannerman, illustrated by Fred Marcinier. All right, I hope you enjoyed our story and I will do one again another day. Bye, love you.